and uh, we're looking and talking about the Premier League this week. Uh, and uh, with uh, Neil Mellor and Paul Robinson, we've got um, well, my talking point, which I which I put on on. Oh, we have a little WhatsApp group, as we know. Um, and the talking point, the first one I said was Tottenham. Okay, so Tottenham are playing on Friday night. They're playing against against Fulham uh, at home. You'd expect them to win. Not Fulham. Who are, who are they playing? They're playing against Palace away. Palace tonight. Uh, it's they played Fulham away. on Monday. Uh, yeah, so they played Monday. They played Friday because uh, they're not involved in European action this year. My question to the group was: If Tottenham are ahead at the end of this match week, which if they if they win against uh, against Crystal Palace, that they will be five points clear ahead of the weekend. Paul Robinson, can we start talking Tottenham title? Let's have that conversation after Christmas and after the New Year if they're still there. Listen, it's a great, it's a fantastic ride that they're on at the moment. And it's the old cliche taking each each game as it comes, and that's exactly what they're doing at the moment. Um, they've been fantastic to watch. We've sat here every week and said about their, their open, free-flowing, attacking football and a breath of fresh air and a post of Coglu. And it has, and it's been fantastic. And, and they're there for a reason. Listen, they're unbeaten, they're sat top of the Premier League. So if that was Manchester City, we'd be talking about them winning the, the Premier League at a canter, um, or possibly a record number of points, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's not, it's Tottenham. They're in uncharted territory. Um, they're in uncharted waters. They've not had any tests yet. The, the defeat's bound to come at some point this season. We don't know when that's going to be. It's how they deal with it. There's going to be a lot of tests between now and the end of the season. Are they title contenders? Yes, they are, because they're in that position. You know, they're, they're sat top of the league and they're sat top of the league for a reason. And until they fall away, until that challenge falls away, like Arsenal did last year, you can't, you can, you, you can't rule them out. If they continue doing what they're doing, they're in that position for a reason. And, and if they, the continuity and they stay there, then they're in the conversation. They're always in the conversation. Like I said, let's have this conversation and judge it after Christmas, end of January. And if they're still there, then we've got a real conversation to have. Fair play on that one, uh, Paul. Neil, I think we had this conversation last season, didn't we, about, about Arsenal. And I don't think you foresaw as much of a title challenge as they put in in the end because of the, the, the depth of depth of quality. But... Well, they didn't have the depth and quality in the end, did they? And uh, but but they put they did put in a bit of a title challenge to City last year. Yeah, maybe it's got a similar feel with, with Spurs this season. Uh, certainly, a good start. It's given them a little bit of momentum, bit of belief. The fact they're not in Europe as well, that freshness will be there. I think if Spurs are to have a good season, and a good season for me would be top four. There's no way we're talking about them in a title race. Absolutely no chance. Uh, we can talk about that with seven, eight games to go, which is another twenty odd games. Um, then they become. A conversation at the moment it's not because Pep, Man City, Klopp, Liverpool, Arteta, Arsenal. I think they're three teams that will all finish above Spurs this season and have proven that they can compete and go all the way for the season. Spurs have never done that. Yes, they've got a new manager, a new fresh impetus at the moment, but no way have they ever proved that they can cope going all, all season. If you get a couple of injuries, they'll, they'll need that look. Then all of a sudden you're thinking that would have a huge impact. Madison, Son. I think they'd be big blows if they were to miss any games. So, great start for Spurs. Yes, the fans are enjoying it, top of the table. But let's have a little look. Seven, eight games. I, I mean, I hear what Paul's saying in January. Let's see where they are in April. Yeah, And, it, and if they're still in the conversation for the, for the Premier League title, that's when I'll, I'll hold my hands up and say, fair enough. There you go. It's, it's, all, <laughs> it's all about April and May. Um, <laughs> but the, the, the last time Tottenham were, were five points clear, if they do beat Crystal Palace, last time they were five points clear at the top of the... Of the top division, which might give you an idea. When was that? 1920. Obviously, Division 1. Division Listen, 1. Listen, I've got two words to say to you. Leicester City. Oh. Who should have won the league that year? Anyway. Tottenham, correct. Tottenham, yes. Uh, was, 1960 no, no Pep Guardiola then. No, no clock. 1961 was the last time Tottenham were five points clear at the top of the table. It was the last time they actually won the league, won the league and cup double in 1961. Uh, it's, the year doesn't end in a one. I've not checked. It's, it's usually when they win the cup, isn't it? Uh, but that's uh, Tottenham, we, we think... Well, we'll check. We'll check in April, shall we? Um, Neil, I want to just um, talk about... I know I know European football... In fact, you were all, all about the Europa League last night, but did you notice one of the other big wins in Europe on 30, which was by Leverkusen? Um, Xabi Alonso doing really, really well in the Bundesliga, already being linked with with Real Madrid, his old side, with possibly replacing Jurgen Klopp eventually. Um, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. But what, do you, what have you made of Xabi Alonso's uh, performances as a manager so far? 
Yeah, made up for him. It's, it's going well, isn't it? It's obviously his first big job. He was Sociedad B uh, coach for a while. He's started really well in, in the Bundesliga. He's only dropped points away at Bayern Munich. And that was a late equaliser for Bayern Munich. Won all the rest of the league games. I, I suppose the test will be, how will he do throughout the season? It started really well. And Xabi Alonso, as a player, had a great career. Obviously started at Sociedad, came to Liverpool, was brilliant. Uh, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, was an outstanding player. And one thing I saw from him as a young player coming to Liverpool, he really connected with what the football club was about and committed himself to Liverpool, the people of the city, to to be the best he could be and a fantastic player. And it looks like he's doing that as a manager now at, at Bayer Leverkusen, so I do wish him well. I'm looking out for him. Yes, big win in Europa League as well. I'm sure they'll be a contender in that competition. And if he does do well, that's when he starts getting linked to Liverpool, to Real Madrid, maybe even Bayern Munich, his former clubs as well. Yeah, because he, he, he was a great lad in the dressing room as well. Did you expect him to become a manager, though? Do you know what? When players achieve what they did in their careers, you know, the likes of himself, Rooney, Gerrard, Lampard, you always think, it, can they emulate what they actually did in their careers and, and achieve what they, they can as a manager? I mean, perhaps, you're looking at managers that have done that. I mean, Ancelotti is, is, is one, isn't he? You know, he's a fantastic player in his, his day. Not many did Zidane, you know, maybe a more recent one. Uh, not many get to those levels that he did as a player. But you know, I wish him well. He's still early days. He's a young coach. Has the appetite to do well. So I wish him well. Good stuff. And uh, back to this weekend, Paul. Um, just looking at the stats coming into into the, the match week. You look at, well, it's we've got Burnley on one win, Luton on one win, Bournemouth on zero win, Sheffield United on one <coughs> point. Are, are we looking at one of the worst the worst ever Premier Leagues for sides down the bottom. And, and can you see any way out for any of those other than maybe Everton dropping in because they might get 12 points deducted and they're not great either? I called it at the beginning of the season, didn't I? I sat there and said that the bottom half of the Premier League could be the weakest that, that we've had. I mean, looking at the table now and looking at the teams that are down there and the lack of points that are down there, I don't think we're on for a record-breaking low, although we could be points-wise by a cumulative of teams, not just one team setting a record. There could be Two or three picking up very, very little points. You know, Burnley, like you say, one win. Bournemouth without a win. Sheffield United without a win. Luton, one win. And they, they, were the, they were the teams that we expected to be down there. And week in, week out, we talk about the same teams with the same struggles. And I don't think that's a trend that's going to change between now and the end of the season. And we said at the beginning of the season when we did our pre-season preview, staying in the Premier League last season was huge. I mean, we know the three teams that missed out. But for Everton staying in that league last year, I think this season is going to be one of the the easiest is an unfair word to use, but I think it was going to be more, one of the more favourable seasons to stay in the Premier League. You have to be fourth best out of a, a poor set of teams. And I think the bottom half of the Premier League, no disrespect, it's fact because of the quality of players, the, the points that they aren't picking up, the budgets that these teams have got. I think we're looking at the weakest bottom half that the Premier League's had for a number of years. Yeah, I think you're right. Neil, would you agree? Can you see any way out for any of those bottom five sides? Is it... There's really not going to be a, a, a traditional big side dropping dropping down there, is it? Unless it's Everton, you, you might suggest. And that might not be completely in their hands. Yeah, it'd be surprised if it, if it changed. Maybe the bottom four, you could maybe include Everton as, as the bottom five. I think it's a worry for Everton in terms of this points deduction. I think it'll be suspended. I don't think they'll get it this season, which may help them staying up in the Premier League. Because if they do get it, I think they do go down. But yeah, no surprise with the bottom four teams. We did both mention Wolves. We thought they would struggle. Maybe they've surprised us. The only ones that have surprised us um, have started well and maybe might have enough to stay away from it. But yeah, I mean, the three promoted teams, we, we all expected them to struggle and they have found it difficult. All right, then, let's get into uh, this match week, shall we? Uh, and we'll kick off on a Friday night. 